is. Now, the longer the distance between the resistance and the axis of rotation or your joint, the more resistance is going to be placed on the joint or the working muscle. So the longer this moment arm is, the more resistance. And the best example is, say this remote was a dumbbell. If I hold the dumbbell in here, it's much heavier when I hold it out here. This is the axis of rotation. This remote, we're gonna call, pretend it's a dumbbell, is going to be the load of resistance. And the length of my arm is the moment arm. The shorter I make the length of my arm, the shorter the moment arm, the less resistance you're going to feel on the axis of rotation. So that is the concept of moment arms. And that's a very simple exercise, but a moment arm is present in every single exercise you do. For instance, when I was debunking uh, idiot John Jaquish, he was talking about how your muscles can produce less force with a chest press back here and the most force up here. Your body isn't able to produce the most force up here. It's able to overcome the most resistance because the resistance becomes lighter up here because of a reduction in moment arm. When you are back here, say for a bench press, the moment arm is a distance between the handle of your hand and the axis of rotation is gonna be your pec and your shoulder. And then when I come up here, look what happens to the moment arm. It shortens dramatically. Now, if the resistance is determined by the length of the moment arm, obviously you're gonna get less resistance up here because the moment arm is shorter than back here. The moment arm is longer. So he pretty much developed a uh, system to add resistance to the muscle where the moment arm is the shortest, which makes absolutely no sense because where the moment arm is the shortest is also where you're getting less actinomyosin overlap. Oh, and by the way.